Spin and break. This is a cute little breakout clone from Tokyo University of Technology's Creative Staff Club. So, you know, like a student uh, uh, group. And this is from their Comet Tech 97 lineup, which is the version 26 release they had. Um, and it's a it's a pretty simple game, pretty simple arcade game. You know, if you ever played Breakout, Alleyway, Arkanoid, all that kind of stuff, you're gonna be familiar with ha what what's happening here. There's a paddle on the bottom of the screen, and your goal is to knock out all the blocks on the top of the the stage, basically. And there's like ten or so stages, and uh, it's got this really cool neon look to it. Even the the uh, title screen has this like little scribbled line look, where the scribbled lines kind of change color and things like that. So it's got this really cool aesthetic here. But really, the big gimmick is that there's a spin in this game as you might be able to guess by its name where when you hit the ball with the paddle instead of most other games where you can kind of like just kind of change the angle of which the ball uh, uh, bounces off of it and goes back to the top of the stage in this game the ball will actually get a curve added to it and when it gets that curve it gets like a special energy around it that lets it lets it cut through multiple blocks and it's this really satisfying feeling and it really fits the aesthetic really well because all this like light kind of shimmers off the ball which kind of fits the you know neon colored look of this game in a lot of ways um so it's a distinct type of control and, and, and that's kind of for better or for worse in a lot of ways because you can do some really interesting and weird shots in this game where the ball will like loop under the paddle and come back out and things like that and it looks really cool um, but it usually is something that you can also end up killing yourself with. So if you don't, you know, properly plan out, you know, how you're going to hit this ball in the first place, or you just, you know, get a little too antsy with how hard you're going to hit it or in what direction you're going to hit it, sometimes you can end up launching the ball directly back into the hole and, and, and losing a, uh, a ball kind of thing. So it's kind of this like risk reward to kind of doing spin shots, although I'm sure as you get better at it, you know, it's it'll be less and less of a, li a risk kind of thing. And whenever, whenever you clear a stage, it's like this little anime character in the corner who like wags their finger at you for some reason. I don't know what this is supposed to be from like a celebratory standpoint. Oh, they just, I don't know. He's like flying an airplane around with his finger or something. I don't know. Um, so, so it's a cool gimmick, but I, I think it does kind of run into a couple main issues here, um, specifically when it comes to penetrating like deeper into the stage, because when you do the spin on the ball, at least in my experience, it, it's hard to get that spin energy to last further than maybe about halfway up the screen. And once you get up to that, to that higher point, um, pretty rarely is it going to actually cut through any of the back half of the board. So you end up with like a lot of the front half of the board being cleared out pretty quickly from the spin attacks and you're just kind of doing normal breakout at that point with the with the back um, uh, blocks and things like that. Which then puts you in a situation that I have with a lot of other breakout games where when you kind of get those back blocks at the end that you're trying to get, the, you know, as the blocks kind of get less and less, it becomes kind of hard to um, target those individual blocks. And so it can slow the pace of the game down a lot if you're not good at aligning your ball to hit the block. So there's a lot of times you're just sitting there for like what feels like, you know, minutes at a time just waiting for the ball to align in all the right ways. But that's kind of where the spin aspect of this game comes in, where I, you know, I am not great at this game. So, uh, you know, I don't necessarily know if I, I wasn't able to really get the spin to 100% hit where I want it to most of the time. Um, but, you know, you should be able to spin the ball in a way that kind of puts it at different angles and things like that that will help you kind of refine your aim and get that kind of last block at the end of the screen. But I still run into that problem with this game where, you know, I, I'm just waiting to hit that last block and, you know, it's a very, like, tedious part of, a, of breakout style games, in my opinion. And one other thing I would say this game kind of lacks is like board diversity. You know, when I think of games like Alleyway on the Game Boy, where there's like a lot of fun shapes. And when you get the ball kind of like behind like the big Mario head, it kind of bounces around in really fun ways. This game doesn't really have that. And part of that might be because of the spin uh, attack, basically, you know, destroying a lot of the upfront blocks. But a lot of the blocks are just kind of laid out in a very standard fashion, even when there are like undestructible blocks or, or blocks that only break with a spin or something like that in your way or power-ups even on the stage. Um, it just very rarely feels like that it really matters and that at the end of the day, the, the layout of the board always just feels very similar to, to one of others. So, but either way, you know, it, uh, those are very minor gripes for like a student game kind of thing. I think this looks really cool. It's got an interesting concept. And, um, and I think it, it just is very generally well put together and, you know, <laughs> didn't solve the, the problem I have with breakout games in general. There's just that like weird pacing at the end of a board. Um, but I think it, it at least, uh, gave me a good reason to sit down and play through like 10 stages of breakout. <laughs>